everybody. Welcome to Corrections uh, for week, for the week of June 14th, and we're just gonna get started because we have quite a we have quite a few. <laughs> a couple weeks back, I uh, said that I bought a toy at Kmart. A bunch of people said all of those stores are closed. They're not all closed. However, I did mispronounce it. It is not Kmart, it is Kmart, with an S at the end. The one that I keep putting on Kroger. It's Kmart's. I said uh, last week during corrections, and again, it is a recurring problem that I make errors in the body of correction that I then have to loop back on. I said, the gig is up when referring to a teacher discovering that a group of students were using their calculators to spell boobs. I said the teacher would say the gig is up. A lot of you, so quickly, I would imagine your keyboards are melted with the speed you pounded in. It is the jig is up. It is not the gig is up. I am aware of the jig is up. That is not what I was saying. A gig is a job, I know you know that, but time and time again you tell me things you know I know. <laughs> what I was saying is that the teacher upon seeing this was done. <laughs> For real. She, she was like, why am I doing this? I'm trying to teach these kids math and they're just using their calculators to, you know, write dirty words. I quit. The gig is up. It's not always the idiom. Yesterday's closer look, I mentioned uh, the Swiss president sort of introduced uh, Putin and Trump, uh, not Trump, oh my God. Oh, I think it's still Trump. A um, Couple of Swiss viewers said, hey, we don't have a president. What we have is a Swiss president Sorry, it's the president of the Swiss Confederation. There is a federal council of sorts of, of seven Swiss leaders with a rotating president. It has to be consensus, though, for the one representative president to speak. So it's, you, it's not one, it's seven. It, I think the best way to think about Swiss politics, I guess, would be it's not like a knife with one blade. It's like a knife with a fork and a spoon and a blade and a little saw and tweezers. <laughs> we'll keep in Europe. Um, I talked about a, a Finnish mountain gnome and was told that Finland is without mountains. It's a very flat country. I should have said a Finnish forest gnome and I am sorry. I, however, was told that my Finnish accent was fantastic. <laughs> a lot of people have asked about it. I addressed it last week, how we censor, even though it's not on television, uh, curse words are censored in the body of this piece. And I said that I did not know and was not even aware that we beep uh, the curse words. And people said, it's not beep, it's bleep. You don't beep a curse word, you bleep it. And I thought maybe as an experiment, we could just try it. So for anyone who felt the need to tell me that, go <laughs> yourself. What did we hear? <laughs> what did we hear? Was it a beep? Was it a bleep? <laughs> 7-Eleven makes Slurpees. I said slushies. It's a mistake that I want to correct. By the way, if you go to 7-Eleven and say slushies, it's going to be fine. They're not going to get the manager. <laughs> Applebee's, I was, I was a little critical of their slogan, eating good in the neighborhood. And the fact that there aren't Applebee's in, in you know, little neighborhoods and a bunch of suburban viewers said that they do, in fact, they might be at malls, but they are nearby and they consider that in their neighborhood. So I am sorry that you live there. I'm kidding. 
I grew up in the suburbs. I would have killed to have an Applebee's. Last week in A Closer Look, uh, we said a cappuccino was a latte with extra foam. And a lot of coffee lovers told us that was totally wrong. And any time, while we did make a mistake, any time, if you can make a mistake that gets you to engage with coffee lovers, it's a worthwhile mistake just to talk with those who love coffee. But this is, I realize what happened, which is Sal Gentile wrote that joke, and Sal doesn't know fancy coffee. This, we should never, we should have fact-checked the minute Sal started talking about lattes and cappuccinos. Like he, Sal makes his own coffee in a pan. <laughs> he just shakes some Sanka into a pan, puts some water, fries it over an open flame drains it through his Mets cab. <laughs> I mean, I mean, to put it in Dennis Miller speak, the only Starbucks Sal would be excited to meet are Dirk Benedict and Katie Sackoff at Comic-Con. He thinks a macchiato is the new dance phrase. Great. <laughs> buoy. I meant to say life preserver. I said buoy. If you there, if you Google image life buoy, it is a life preserver. But that was I was just trying to retrofit. We got it wrong. Oh, you know, this is interesting. We've been talking a lot about Wedding Crashers 2, and we were talking a lot. We wanted credit for it because we were talking about Wedding Crashers, and then all of a sudden they announced that there's going to be a Wedding Crashers 2. But someone said, hey, man, you called this a while back. Now, in uh, 2011, I did the White House Correspondents' Dinner, a night that is often brought up because people say that is the night that Donald Trump decided to run for president. And... I'm often asked, do you regret having uh, told those jokes? And uh, I don't. But uh, this also happened. Uh, let's take a look at this. President and Joe Biden were not invited to the royal wedding. And when Biden found out, he immediately said to the president, you, me, wedding crashers too. <laughs> so here's hoping that uh, for the next decade, when I do interviewers, people can say, when you look back at that night, do you regret the Wedding Crashers 2 joke? <laughs> this one breaks my heart. I called my co-star in Journey to the Center of the Earth, Brendan Fraser, Brendan Fraser. And in my defense, the only thing I'll say in my defense is we were an insanely close cast. Totally first name only. I remember the first day I was like, it's such a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Frey. And he was like, it's Brendan. <laughs> In these, all the stories, I mean, again, this is a, you know, there's been many books written about that film and what happened on the set. <laughs> and I do invite you if, you, if if you loved that story and want to hear more, do please read my book about that time in my life, An Actor's Journey to the Center of Myself. <laughs> we talked about how uh, cock doo doo is what a rooster says, but in German, I said it was kikiriki. Uh, a lot of people said, that's technically right, but you're saying it's wrong. It's, and then I looked it up, it's kikiriki. <laughs> I should have known that it was like the rhythm would be the same. But uh, it gave me an idea. I'm very happy to tell you that I have pitched this to Pixar. It is a children's film about... <laughs> it's a World War II film where um, chickens, American chickens, are uh, smuggled into Germany so they can spy on the German army who has set up camp at a farm. And it's thrilling because the chickens, uh, 11 hens and one rooster, 
And by the way, the way they smuggle them in is as fertilized eggs. They haven't even hatched yet. It's just one carton of egg. It's called the Dirty Dozen. And <laughs> these chickens, they manage to steal these German secrets. And then the whole film is this exciting escape across, back across enemy lines. And the, all 11 hens make it. And the rooster, uh, right at the end, who's disguised as a German rooster, gets stopped by, you know, border guards. And he has impeccable German because, of course, he's, you know, he grew up there. He was hatched there. I don't need to tell you. I've already pitched this to you. <laughs> and he gets away with it. He, he, he convinces them that he's a German rooster. And you, as the audience, is relieved that this night crossing has not been foiled until the sun comes up. He can't help himself. He's an American rooster. He says, cock-a-doodle-doo, and uh, the jig is up. <laughs> and insofar as his career as a spy, the gig is up. Both work. And uh, it's a heartbreaking final scene because you have these 11 hens on an allied hilltop looking down as um, you know, they lay the rooster's head over a, you know, an old feed sack or whatever it is. And uh, right before they bring the ax down, he winks at him. And then right after they bring the ax down, his headless body just like runs around <laughs> for like five minutes. And that's the part Pixar was like, it's for kids? I had a joke about Metal Gear, uh, the video game Metal Gear, cheat codes. And someone was like, Metal Gear didn't have cheat codes, they had Easter eggs. And this one broke my heart because Alex Bays, our head writer, had written that joke. And look, I've said it a bunch, Alex Bays is America's greatest living joke writer. Nothing breaks my heart more than having to tell him he's made a mistake. And he rarely makes them. And he's very confident that the way he writes a joke is uh, the best way to write a joke. Um, other writers, they, what they'll do is they'll write the jokes and they'll print it out on a printer and they hand it to me on paper. Bayes uh, chisels his into rock. <laughs> so I had to go to Bayes' office and tell him, you know, you f***ed up, because this is top down, right? Like, we, if we're going to correct ourselves, we have to correct all of us. Um, and so I, you know, I went into his office, and he's, you know, he's working on the monologue. So he's just like, <laughs> 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 and I tell him, uh, "Hey, uh, Metal Gear doesn't have, you know, they don't have uh, cheat codes. They have Easter eggs." And uh, he just goes, "Maybe I should take my skills elsewhere." And that, like, we need him. Like, he's the lifeblood of this place. We could not get by without him, and not just as a joke writer, because he's been writing jokes for me. Weekend Update, every single uh, Weekend Update I did. Uh, he was the head writer of that, and he came here. And all these other gigs, uh, including uh, the White House Correspondents. Like, I can't imagine what that would have been like if I didn't have Bayes uh, writing jokes. And, um, and not just, again, as a joke writer, but also as support, as someone who was there for me. And uh, I was trying to find that Wedding Crashers 2 thing today, and I actually have never watched the White House Correspondents' Dinner and this really special thing. I found this really special thing, which is um, I told, because I wrote jokes that night too, I told one of my jokes, and it, um, it cut to bays in the audience. And it wasn't the best joke, but I don't know. It was so touched by the support I got from Bayes. Um, you know what, let's just take a look. Comcast, of course, bought NBC this year. I'm assuming by accident. <laughs> or when Goldman Sachs cut up the network and bundled it in the lower tranche of a CDO.
Thanks, bro. <laughs> so anyways, I'm backing out of Bezos' office, right? Because I'm terrified that, you know, the last thing I'd want for him to leave. And uh, I say to him, you want me to door open or close? And he goes, uh, close it and turn the lights off. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> we'll just leave him there in the dark. And so again, I'm backing up. I'm backing up. And then, of course, who do I bump into? <laughs> Shoemaker. who's like, oh! Watch where you're going! And again, I'm like, I'm the one backing up, and he's facing me. But again, I don't want to have that conversation. He goes, what were you doing in Bezos' office? I'm like, well, I, there was a corrections thing. He goes, don't you correct, Bez? We need him! I'm like, look, I know. Just sometimes I don't need you to be in my face all the time. And he goes, oh, what are you going to do about it? And I go, you know what? Maybe I'm going to fire you. And he goes, I got nowhere to go! <laughs> Just immediate. And again, I wanted... I was, like, looking for some back and forth. I had some aggression to get up, but immediately he's just like, no! He's like, I don't know how to do nothing else! <laughs> and now, again, like, now I'm taking care of him, which is the last thing I wanted to do. And I'm like, oh, God, look, I'm sure you could do other stuff, you know? And he's like, you think so? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, well, there's one thing I've always... The one thing I always wanted to do. And I was like, oh, you know, what is it? He goes, no, it's crazy. And I go, look, I'm sorry I said what I said. But I, as much as I can't do the show without Baze, I can't do the show without you. And anything you ever wanted to do, I'm sure you could do. So why don't you tell me what it is? He goes, you sure you're not going to make fun of me? I go, I'm not going to make fun of you. What is it that you've always wanted to do? And he looks at me and he goes, your mother! And he knows her. <laughs> I'm a little worried about time tonight. I don't quite know where we are. But um, if this averages, oh, well, you might have noticed the title tonight. It says short form. Um, because if this averages between 2 and 20 minutes, it is, um, it is Emmy eligible in the category of short form. Now, this ain't one of those things where I'm here to be like, for your consideration, I ain't that, chief. I got an Emmy. One. <laughs> Two would be nice for, like, then you put books between them. But um, I always, I do find, like, when people are, like, uh, you know, for your consideration, I find that a little grotesque. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to say that with each passing week, I remain ambivalent about this. <laughs>